Right, I think we're good to go. Sorry about the delays there, of course, as you saw. But because we, um, we have to make sure that people were current members. Uh, the gentleman who, the direct debit, appears to have been cancelled. If you see me afterwards, if you haven't got a voting slip, we'll give you one. If you see me afterwards, we'll set that up. Uh, right, thank you. Welcome to the meeting. Um, I'm using a foreign PC, so presumably that's going to work. Okay. Um, I'm told that we are quarried. Um, I'm asked to remind you that there's an induction loop running around the um, uh, seated area for um, anybody who needs to use the facility. The proceedings have been recorded. Uh, they will go on our website. Um, that's what we've done in previous years. So again, if anybody's uncomfortable with that, then um, probably need to leave the meeting because that's our process and it's something we've done for some time. Did I forget anything wrong? No, it seems not. So. Right, so um, I'll stand here to do this as opposed to over there. So apologies for absence. I've got one from Edward Hodson. Um, I think it's true to say he he is the longest serving membership secretary. I think he's done it for longer than I have. Uh, he can't be here for ill health and he much regrets that because it's the first day Jim has missed since I think he Join the association. Richard Huss who's uh, doing Motti. And Richard Huss is doing Motti as well, so. I don't think we've got anybody else's. Hold on. Fred Roberts. Fred Roberts, thank you. He's uh, one of the people I've worked with on NLD. Okay, so the agenda, um, the director's report for the year end uh, 2017. Um, I will, as I have in the past, uh, just give um, an overview of some of the data that was provided in the report, but I'm not going to go through it in any detail. I have got some detail behind that if required. Uh, for example, the thing that we've been asked before is what are creditors and debit debtors, so we've got that detail if needed. Um, but then we will move on to uh, a resolution adopting the report for the directors uh, for the year end and the balance sheet as shown in the annual report that we so that you've all got a copy of it on your seat as well. Then we'll move on to election of directors. Um, I think I've picked up the wrong version of the presentation here, my friend, which I've done in my rug. Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. So can I get my own PC back? And, yeah. and whilst we've been doing it, I've changed it on the screen. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. We've been rushing today, as anybody who's seen us outside will have noticed. So, those are the election of directors, but it's just been pointed out to me by Lawrence that I really should introduce the directors. I know they haven't changed from last year, but nevertheless, so. Starting at the end. Hi, my name's Alan Finch. Sue Bradley, Bulletin Editor. Colin Slark, Treasurer. Not really Technical Director. Gareth Jones, SMT Editor. Lawrence Smith, Current Show Director. Carol Regan, Trader Coordinator for the show. Ryan Dominic, Director with our Portfolio. Mike Riley, Company Secretary. Alan Regan, Membership and Chair. Right. And then finally, we'll be on to awards, recognition, items from the floor, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, 2017 highlights. Um, I, I've already... Um, written about some of this in my chairman's comments, but I know that not everybody reads those. Um, membership static, basically, we're 100 paying members down at the end of 2017 over what we were in 2016. Um, let's put that in perspective. We're still uh, around the 4,000 <coughs> paying member mark and around the 4,500 total membership mark. And, uh, my own feeling is that a variation of 100 year on year on a gross number of about 4,000 is not a cause for concern. Uh, 2016 was 120 up on the year before, so we're basically at the same level as we were in 2015. Um, we had our biggest, uh, bigger than, biggest ever um, Garden Railway, National Garden Railway show. Uh, funnily enough, it didn't achieve the greatest footfall of any show. The greatest footfall of any show occurred the year before. But nevertheless, it was, uh, uh, we got a lot of plaudits from the people who came to the show, and we did some things at the show that we'd never done before. 
Um, a significant enhancement has been made to the um, online renewal process. Uh, for the first time, we've got a system which we can all use to maintain our own membership data securely and in real time. I know not everybody wants to be in part of the online world, but more and more, that's what's happening. An example is, I've renewed, few, I've, sorry, I've joined fewer new members at every show since I became membership secretary. And the more we have online, the fewer people actually join in person. They've already done it before we get here. I think I've joined five people today. I think I joined 15 last year. I think I joined 25 the year before. It's more people are doing stuff online, so that's why I think that being on, online and having a good site is the way to do it. Um, we had three anniversary trains on the Talithlin and on the Welsh Pool. Um, I particularly like that one, but I suppose I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> um, and the person in red lurking from the balcony there is the outgoing um, show director, Lawrence, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah. guilty as charged. Um, again, to be clear, um, those anniversary specials broke even. So no member fund subsidised them, neither did they make money to subsidise the wider um, running cost of the association. Um, we had a pretty lousy day on the Sunday, Saturday with the weather, but we had a brilliant day as that picture shows on the Sunday. Um, additional benefits that we um, had, the history of 16 million the association. Um, some people liked it a lot, some people liked it less, some people found it um, not very interesting because they weren't interested in the history of the association. Others, it took them back to their early days and they loved that. So I think it's an example of we can't really hit the sweet spot for everybody all the time, but all we can do is the best we can do. Um, sticky sheets, I think it was a suggestion from the floor last year that we do this. Um, again, some people have loved them, some people are can't really see a, a use for them, but what we were doing was responding to a request from uh, the membership and that's what we did. Um, another significant achievement, albeit we've really completed it um, very recently, um, but we haven't released it on the Thursday before the show because people's attention will be um, diverted onto other things. We've released it at that time because that was the, the soonest we could release it and we thought that the that if we got it out there before the show, if people wanted to raise it uh, or raise questions, they could do so. So one of the things I will say is, any questions about the Board of Tesco, please can we have them outside of the main AGM. We'll have question and answers afterwards. The reason is because it's not really an AGM um, topic in terms of the um, articles of the association, but it's nevertheless a reasonable thing to discuss. And finally, no change to subscription fees for this year, but we fully expect there will be a change next year. Right, so the accounts, um, you've, you've got these, and you've got those in the annual report. They are um, a cut and paste from the annual report, and what I've done in the past is just add, add, add some comments, or have some comments. So first, so first of all, turnover was up. Um, remember we increased subscription fees last year, and so that would drive turnover up. Um, it was offset by slightly lower net income from the national show. Um, as I said, big as the show was, it actually achieved a slightly lower footfall than the year before. And 100 uh, visitors fewer is a thousand pounds less. Um, cost of sales has gone up primarily to, due to increased publication costs. So again, I think the reason we explained last year for putting up the subscription fees was that paper had gone up because paper is paid for in uh, euros and postage had gone up because the principal driver of the postage is fuel and fuel is costed or paid price in dollars and the pound was weaker against the dollar. So um, I'm afraid that postage costs have continued to go up um, that's completely outside of our control, but um, in terms of publication costs and printing costs specifically, was pretty much where we were last year. No significant change there. 
administrative expense significantly down. Uh, we as a board have um, tried to lead the way and find smarter ways to have our meetings and find less costly places to have our meetings. Um, we've been to Brambleton um, or Hartland and using one of the facilities that the Brambleton guys use on a couple of occasions. That's a much more cost effective place to have a meeting. It's not a place we can always have meetings. We wanted to have two meetings there this year, but the venue isn't available. So we're trying the best we can to make sure that uh, we keep that cost as low as possible. Another thing we've done for this year is, as um, directors, we all booked our accommodation for last night um, about four or five months ago, I think. I think for our room, it cost, it cost us £29.50. £29 so again, by shopping around, we're trying to make sure that we spend our money as wisely as possible. Um, the result was a small loss for 2017, but we published the history. Had we not published the history, we'd be reporting a small surplus. And this year, we're refreshing the handbook. The handbook's going to be a lot bigger than it was before. It's going to be up to date and have some new uh, topics and new information in. It is, it is our intention to provide that to all members. Um, that's going probably to, to result in a small loss again for 2018. And for some years we've been trying to feed back some of the surplus that we've generated. And this, is the, this is one way of doing it. So I've got some detail on the national show, debtors and creditors, if anybody wants to see them. Um, nobody wants to see them, then I'll move on to the next slide, which is resolutions. So first, the first resolution is that the report of the directors and the annual report of the annual accounts for the year ending 31st of December 2016 with the balance sheet as at that date be accepted. And I need a proposal and a second to please. Slide three, nine, seven. Thank you very much, Rob. Five, three, nine, seven. Yeah. Five, three, nine, seven. And a seconder. David Rhodes. And may I have a show of hands in favour, please? And a show of hands against? And there were nine positive postal votes. Right, okay, so I view that as accepted unanimously. There were no votes against. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, the next is election of directors. There are four directors who are, uh, no, not quite right, there are, yes, there are four directors that are re retiring by rotation, um, of which, uh, sorry, and, and there is a fifth director that's standing down. So the four directors need to be re-elected, and I'll speak in a moment about the um, replacement for the director that's standing down after we've done that. So the first is that Gareth Jones be re-elected as director. I need a proposal and a second one, please. Andy? Eight. Nine, six. Nine, six, one, one. And Dave George is seconded. Fourteen, five, one. And a show of hands for Gareth, please. Okay. Any against? <laughs> Nine positive postal votes. Super. You've got the job. I'm sure he fully expected that to happen. And he richly deserves it. Absolutely. Okay, and now the other um, journal that we produce every quarter, Suzanne produces, um, does an equally good job, just on a slightly different grade of paper. Um, the reason we do that, by the way, is if we produce bulletin on slightly less heavy paper and SMT on the paper we use, we get the whole package in at just under 500 grams. If it went over 500 grams, it would cost a lot more in postage. Okay, so, um, resolution that Suzanne Bradley be re-elected as director. Can I have a proposal, please? <coughs> 4941. And a seconder? 3552. And a show of hands in favour, please. Any against? And were there any? Nine positive. Super. 
we've got the job against those that. <coughs> right. Um, the third resolution for election of directors, that Colin Slight be re-elected as director. He is, as you know, our treasurer. I need a proposal, please. Three 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 eight two zero. Three three three. That's correct. Yeah. If you remind me afterwards, I'll explain why there are different styles of number. Outside here. Yeah. I'd be pleased to have that. Right. <laughs> and a second, please. Four four zero zero. And a show of hands in favour. Any against? Oh. Eight positive post <laughs> or <laughs> negative post or oh, right. <laughs> Must be the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Colin, for being prepared to stand again. And finally, that Mike Riley, to my right here, be re-elected as a director, and he is, as you know, our company secretary. I need a proposal, please. Oh, lots of people. Four seven six. Four seven seven six. Tony Winston. Tony. Tony Winston. And a second, please. Thank you. This. Six one four one. Chris Riley. Chris Riley. No relation. No <laughs> what, what would the odds of me selecting you? <laughs> right, and uh, can, we, can we have a show of hands in favour, please? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and against? So tell us. Nine positive. <laughs> right, thank you very much again for being prepared to stand. So that leaves me then to Lawrence. <laughs> who is standing down after five years, not what I wrote in my chairman's column, after five years as show director, um, we think that you've done a great job and that you've really, you've, you've developed things along the way. Uh, we're sad to see you go, but we fully understand why. We wish you well. Um, and we've got a little car for you. But, but Carol hasn't brought it, but we'll be. <laughs> and we, we propose to make a little gift to you as well. But we just need to collude with you over what that gift is. You've sorted it? Go on then, excellent. Um, so I'd like to thank Lawrence for what he's done. I hope you all feel that he's done a good job. to a different place. Right, um, you'll be pleased to know, I hope, that we have a successor for Lawrence. He's not here at the moment because he's actually got stewarding duties, doing floor walking right now. Um, Mick is um, uh, a, a, not a member from the Oxfordshire area. He's attended our first board meeting. Um, we didn't manage to put him off. <laughs> and um, he was here yesterday to participate in setup, and we're here right to the end of the day to participate in teardown. Um, and uh, he joins the board as another biker. So he uh, arrived here on his, uh, his motorbike with massive panniers. <laughs> so Mark, please, because he's a biker. And Alan, please, as well, because he's a biker. So, we have a replacement for the show director, which is great news. Um, the fact that he's been able to participate, there's been a, oh, there will be an orderly handover, I think, means that we can move smoothly on to planning the 2019 years. Right, so, any other business? Um, the first is the award of the Lamb Trophy, which isn't here, it's on the membership desk, and it doesn't have a sticker on it to say who's getting it at the moment because that would kind of give the game away. Um, nominally, it's in the chairman's gift, but I always consulted the board beforehand. And we decided that we were going to award it to a husband and wife team who um, we think have done, have been a bigger enabler for our hobby in the past 35 years than anybody else has. Um, 
we're going to give it to um, Roger and Chris Foxworth from Roundhouse. Um, and I'm going to go um, after the AGM and um, embarrass her on the stand. Um, Harry knows that she's getting it, but she doesn't. And then we'll arrange a plaque on the, the thing afterwards. Um, Roger was a member for many years, and those of you who have looked into history will have seen pictures of him exhibiting his, and um, it must have been a mess fired early lady on. And um, uh, I think that the way that they've, the, the customer service they've provided, but particularly the spare parts they've provided, they've enabled lots of us to do things. We couldn't have done Victory, for example, if it hadn't been for the support from our house. So I hope that this meets with everybody's approval. We think that they're good candidates, and um, hopefully it'll be a bit of a surprise to Chris when I go along with the, the coupling in a little while. So I know they're not here, but it would be nice to have a round of applause. Right, second thing is an appeal. Um, Martin and Liz Shrubso, who can hear me, but they're behind the fencing over there, um, have um, been running member to member for a number of years now. Um, they would like to stand down, but they'd like to stand down after the 2019 show. And so we'll be looking for um, a person or some people to take over from them. Um, they will be providing I think um, a well-oiled process that the new person or people can take on and they've got a great team behind them who turn up year after year to make it happen. So um, I will be appealing through the chairman's column and through social media and so on and so forth for somebody to take that on. Um, it's an important service. The queue of people that builds up before it opens just is testament to how popular it is. So I, I really hope that uh, that goes ahead. Um, right, the, th the second thing, or the third thing I want to do is actually, they're okay, I so. Um, one of the things that I didn't do, um, I think the first time that we appointed a, an honorary member, and if you remember that was Nigel Town three years ago, was we never gave um, Nigel or the, or, or tag the year after, anything that he could stick on his mantelpiece and put on his wall. <coughs> so I decided to fix that. So what I have here, tag, I'll give you the packing afterwards. We've got a little thing that can go on your mantelpiece. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you I'm sorry we didn't do it before, but it was something that um, we recognised was a miss, and so we corrected it. Oh, smash it. Thank anyway. you very much indeed. Now, Nigel's not here, but I'll be cutting along to see Nigel later on. Um, we decided to award another honorary membership uh, this year. Um, somebody who's served the association on the board and has continued to serve the association since he left the board um, is in the audience. Um, all of you know him, Jeff Lumsden. Um, I think what you and your wife continue to do with ticket sales is great. Um, I'm still good. Yeah, and, and they've been working also on the merchandise and stuff. Yeah, um, he doesn't deserve that because he hasn't sold it all yet. <laughs> <laughs> but likewise, we've got something which um, you can stick on your mantelpiece at home, and again, much deserved. to say that the board receives suggestions from members as to who might be um, so honoured um, and uh, both um, Tag and Jeff, there was a suggestion from a member that these people should be honoured. Any of you could do the same thing. 
and we will consider it. I won't say we'd do one every year, but it's the kind of thing, I think, that the membership is quite within its rights to suggest to the board. Equally, the board is quite within its rights to decide to do it of its own volition. So, it's um, not something I think that we, the first, I don't know, the first six or seven years I was on the board, it was something we just didn't seem to do. And I, mean, I think we kind of missed a trick there. So. Right. Um, something Mike gave me. Um, you know, we're not, we don't get everything right. Um, and, you know, if we, if we get things wrong, then we deserve reasonable criticism. But we do sometimes get unsolicited um, <coughs> letters of praise. And Mike got one as company secretary, which... There we go. It doesn't come up very well, but basically thanking us for what we do. So, um, funnily enough, we, we don't get any, any letters t telling us that we, we all want to be thrown out on our ear. Um, we don't get many of these, but I think it's nice when it happens. So, um, we think that we're appreciated, and, and sometimes we actually get some written proof of that. Right. Items from the floor, and all that said is not please on the board of test code unless you consider it to be um, uh, something that should be discussed within the context of our articles. But by all means, let's discuss that afterwards in the open forum. Tag. Yes, I, I would like to propose a vote of thanks for the team. Sorry. Yeah. I'd like to propose a vote of thanks for the team that have actually got this boiler code finally sorted out. It makes a huge difference. And we've been unsure of things for years. And this makes a huge difference, not only to us, but to the trade. Because the way things were going a few years ago, it would have made it impossible uh, for locomotives to be comfortably sold to people other than uh, in an organisation such as this. And, uh, it's made a huge difference, and I, for one, am very grateful. Good. 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 Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm, I just want to follow up with something that you've shown about the, the letter there. Um, we've had four letters to, this year from members thanking us for the uh, sales. Right. One gentleman. Um, Set a page and a half. A history of he lived a mile from our house uh, before he joined the Royal Air Force, um, and he was reminiscing about uh, Benton and Newcastle and everything else. He's been here this, this morning and introduced himself to Chris and myself. Uh, a wonderful guy. Um, it's just nice to uh, know that people actually yeah, do appreciate what we do. Yeah. Just want to make you aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Can we go into tags? Tags proposed. Vote of thank. Vote formalised. We ought to formalise it, right? So we need to have somebody to um, second it. Do we have to have a vote on it? We don't, but I think it would be nice, and then we relay it, it through you. We relay it back. Yeah. Yeah, so we better have a, a, a vote. <coughs> now this will be interesting. Anybody against the new dress code? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Was that Keith Buckley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what you probably know, those of you who've looked on social media, is there is one member who is incandescent about the gas tank aspect of the code. So, a little bit of, like, I said, 20 minutes ago, we can't get it right for everybody all the time. All we can do is get it right for most. And I think that's what we've done with the test codes. But there will be one or two people who are not at all happy with what we've done. Is this the first associated with hedgehogs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not going to get drawn into it. It's, you know, people have got they've got every right to offer opinions. Right. Any other points from the? Just to pick up on a query, a point that you made earlier, or asked for a little more, more explanation. Um, you mentioned 
with the magazine and the different paper qualities that we just slide under the 500 gram. Does that actually mean that if SMT was it to increase by another four pages, we'd bust it? No. Oh, okay. It's, <laughs> it's something that we're discussing. Right, so the first thing is we actually bust the limit in November last year. And uh, nobody's remarked on this so far, but what we did was we took two millimetres off the top and bottom of SMT. <laughs> and that got us just in just under. Now, um, Gareth, Gareth raised a point at the last um, a discussion document at the last board meeting, and we can see the time when SMT will need to go beyond um, 76 it was 78 pages, the one that we trimmed. And we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Um, we haven't made those decisions yet, um, but we can see that the time's coming when the advertising interest in the magazine is so great that to maintain the same level of content, the number of content pages, we're going to need to put the weight up. So then we've got questions about weight of paper, the weight of paper in bulletin, and so on and so forth. We don't have the answer to it, but we know that it's something that we've got to wrestle with this year. And, and we, what we have decided is turning adverts away is not the solution. Um, if, if people want to advertise in our journalists for a reason, then we should do that. But we're going to have to make, we're going to have to discuss it further, basically. So we flagged it up. We think probably that um, the first time it might hit us is going to be this time next year because the February million is just under 750 grams. If it goes over 750, it becomes a small parcel. It's going to cost a, a quid more per member to mail. Um, and that's the peak interest in advertising in the run to the show. So it's something we're, we're looking at, we just don't have the solution yet. An opportunity to um, I, I think publishing online brings with it. No, the, the question was: Is there an opportunity to publish online? And um, we haven't looked at that recently, but we did in the past. And um, one of the difficulties we'd have is to publish online. We'd need to have a website that only or a vehicle, a distribution vehicle that only allowed current members to view it. And we also know, probably I'm more painfully than most because of renewals, that a lot of members still don't have anything to do with the internet. So we still have to print the thing. And if we printed a smaller number, our cost per copy would go up. So it's, it's not a silver bullet is the way I put it. It's not something we've We've said no to, but and it might be something we discuss in the context of how do we deal with more pages. But it's another of these things that would satisfy some and dissatisfy others. Your Chris, name's Chris, a question. Chris Riley, six one four one. Adam, um, when I joined the association some years ago, I think we were about two thousand members, yeah. but there was considerable angst at the AGM that with each passing year of the membership, the average age went up by year. And of course that eventually meant that the older and leading us members would leave us with no association in any year's time. Are you able to make any comment about the average age of the membership and is it now at least held or is it even better still coming down because more and more young people are joining? Right. Um, I can only give you an anecdotal response and the anecdotal response is at least six to nine months old. So one of the things that I decided to do with the board support in the run-up to the implementation of the general data protection regulations is to reduce the amount of data that we store. One of the pieces of data I got rid of was date of birth. It first got rid of it by making it year of birth and then I decided it needed to go completely because we wouldn't have been able to demonstrate to the um, Information Commissioner's Office that we actually did anything with the data. We couldn't say it informed management decisions as opposed to it was just interesting to have. So what I can tell you is the demographic kept had been going up and 
we were approaching 40% of the membership being over 65. That said, the retirement age of younger people today is at 65. So maybe it wasn't the right measurement point anyway. So my, my gut feel, and, and it's entirely anecdotal, and I've no data to back it up now, is the demographic has moved up slightly. We've got a higher percentage of the membership over 65. But I'd also argue that people are now going to work beyond 65 and probably have a life expectancy to look after themselves and they're lucky well beyond that time. So um, I don't think we're massively concerned as a board. And I think the other thing is there's not a lot we can do about it. Um, we have got the lowest subscription fee we can have for juniors and we welcome them. Um, and we still have um, a, a, a very active um, enrolment stream. But in terms of influencing it to be drawn from 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, I don't think there's a great deal we can do. What we do see, and what we do hear from members of join is they either come up from um, what we disrespectfully call electric mice, and they come down from the engineering sites, where the sheer weight of a five-inch gauge loco is something that they can't really de deal with anymore. So, again, we don't have a, a perfect answer to it. And uh, as a stress, we're not, we don't have that data anymore. Can I add something to that, Alan? You may. It's not just about what the board does, it's what about all the membership does mm. and the area groups. And, and just occasionally I've had some feedback that some of the areas are unfriendly, shall we say, to uh, <laughs> juniors. So, you know, it, it's in everybody's hands. If we want more people and we want more people of a younger age, we all need to go out there and uh, encourage them to join us and, uh, you know, take part. Yeah. I think certainly over the years I've been coming, it's noticeable to me that there are more active, younger people out there, either be on the stands or um, in, in the very public, both, both ways. Um, so I think we're getting them, it's just that they may not necessarily be in the, in the volume. I, I also think, from what I've seen in the membership role, that they're joining us in their I don't know, early 50s, I'd say. And what I, those I've spoken to put it down to, well, um, my kids have now, whilst they, they may have flown the nest, but there's still the responsibility of the bank of mum and dad. Um, they, a, a person's got more time to think about doing things for himself or herself. So, yes, I mean, I think about the people that I enrolled last year, and there were a fair, fair sprinkling of people who I thought, oh, they're significantly younger than me. But what we can do about it, Rod's probably right, we can just be um, warm and welcoming to those who join us. And those who do, join us, as I've just said in the 50s, I try to get them to um, local group meetings. <coughs> Those people who are in local groups, maybe you could think to yourself, what do we do to reach out to people who've joined the association in our area? Because one of the things I don't get asked for is, can you tell me who's joined in our area who discloses that information in the past six months? I could do that. Then the rest is down to any of you that are local group uh, organised. I know how much work that is, but that's another way of really attacking it. Uh, so, just to go back to the magazines, uh, what are the um, cons against using the thinner paper for the other magazines as well as to cut down on the weight? Uh, I assume there must be reasons to not both print on the same quality paper beyond, because I know you want to print them both on the better quality paper if you could, but uh, as a, a reason, a legitimate reason not to print them both on the same better quality paper. Well, well, when we first made the decision, and that was quite some years ago, we actually held 110 and 130 gram paper out. We just passed it round at a board meeting. And it just felt so much better. It felt like quality. And I know that's a 
a daft thing to say, but it just felt like quality. And we decided to print SMT on 130, we printed the special issues on 130 as well. And we were coming from Exchange, which had been black and white, for those who have been members for a long time. And, and we were moving to Colour Bulletin. And we, we just, we decided it wasn't necessary to use the same weight of paper with Bulletin. So it was a, a very subjective and a very emotional reason, but that's why we went to that, the higher quality paper. Now, um, we could go back to 110 for both of them and just have the covers at 130, which is Bulletin, 130 covers, 110 inside. We just don't feel like it would, we, don't th we think we'd lose something. Um, it's, it's a bit of a wishy-washy answer, really, but that's the truth. You briefly you, you really mentioned, well, yeah. mentioned earlier that there went a, a long from the new membership rooms that you were going to... Right. So, so when we started the, the, the association, we started as member number one. And uh, after a time, the um, association records were put into an access database, Microsoft Access Database. And um, we just continued the ascending sequence. We got to, I don't know, 10,000 and something. When we went to Warners, Warners used their own database that all, you know, everything segmented from everything else. So Warners also do subscription management for Gimra. Our stuff from Gimra are segmented and they do obviously their own in-house garden but it's all segmented. They've got a system called Myriad. Myriad uses a nine character subscription number. In our case it's prefixed with an E. Uh, so we, we we had to use that new number. Now I know that some members, and one of them can hear me over the wall there, some of us are very attached to our existing numbers. And I thought that there'd be an absolute riot from the membership if I said at the same time as moving to one as we're changing all your uh, membership numbers. I think some people would have been very upset about that. So we found a way to continue to use the established association one, but for new members there was no way to continue the sequence that we'd used. So for new members, the Warner subscription number was the membership number. For those who were mem became members before we joined Warner's, it's the old association one. And for those who rejoin and can provide, or I can find, their old membership number, I can re reinstate them. So that's why there are two different sorts. And anything that's six digits in the membership list is one of the new Warner subscription numbers. Anything that's five digits or less is one of the old association membership numbers. <coughs> Any other questions? Then I declare the formal AGM closed and I would suggest that we just move on to general open forum questions and answers. Um, Rod, question for you. Will the, this bit be videoed or does it keep the video running anyway? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends how long you are. I've got 45 minutes left on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had anything to eat yet, so, so it ain't going to be that long. Right. Um, any questions then? Any. any... <laughs> oh, hey. um, it's a little bit of Wait, wait, wait. Let's give me just a minute. <laughs> Yeah. Um, we were going to get a brass frame and then it got the cost or whatever was a problem. And then there was no sort of follow up and then we got was a little badge to sell on. What, what was the... Uh, what happened? Yeah. The, the, um, the cost of delivering the frame um, went from being sub a pound per member to being south of two pounds per member. On top of which, we would have had to have got the thing put in individual plastic bags because you can't tack it. You know the way we tack the DVD? We couldn't tack it to something and we really didn't think that leaving it loose in the magazine was going to be the way to go. 
so it was a cost versus benefit discussion and it was also very awkward to deliver it to members and, and that's the reason we decided not to do it. Yeah. Uh, I managed to get it off without any damage, but if it did have the bullets in or some other part of the paperwork, it would have been very hard Well, there's a, there was a conscious reason for putting it on SMT, and that was last year, um, and he's gone now as David, but well, he could have attested to this. Last year, there were about 50 members reported DVD problems. The DVDs are arranged by a company in Scotland and have them for some time. And I sent some faulty DVDs up to them for analysis. It came back that they've been bent. And they may not look as though they've been bent, but at some stage in the delivery process, somebody's attempted to fold what's in there. And one of the things that Warner said was we put in the DVD on something that's in the middle of the pack, and no, but the post people can't see it. If you put it on the outside, then it's more likely that they won't fold it. It just wasn't possible to put it on bulletin or on any of the other thinner magazines. It needed to go on something substantial like SMT. So it was a conscious decision to put it on SMT because we thought that that had got the best chance of getting it to members intact. <coughs> this year, I've had less than single figures in terms of uh, the number of people with a faulty DVD. So I think it's gone in the right place. It just needs removing with care. I know it can be done because I've removed it myself from about 120 copies of SMT. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, my name's Peter Hollings with um, 331469. Right. I'm a newbie. Um, on, the, on the subject of the bulletin and the, and the CD, I can't get mine to work. Come and see me, I'll give you another one. You give me another one? Okay, thanks. The other, sorry, just one other yeah. thing. The data protection, you yeah. sort of mentioned it in your yeah. first part, but what's the state of play on the data state protection? state of play with data protection is the board has agreed the first iteration of the association's data protection policy. Um, it's ready for release. I decided not to release it the same week as the board of Tesco because all that would happen is people would accuse, of us, accuse us of trying to bury one within the other and both of them at the time of the national show. So I expect to release that within the next two weeks. There will be a shed notice, it will be a downloadable document from um, the website. It's been subject to um, external review, external professional review. Um, it's also been scrutinised closely by um, people on the board. I will be very candid. We haven't gone and paid somebody to write it for us. I did try to see whether we could get some paid for consultancy and they said they weren't taking work on until November this year, which would be six months after GDPR has come into effect. Um, the people who've looked at it think we've been pretty transparent. So the, the, the policy basically says this is what we collect this is what we use it for, this is your ability to see what we collect, this is your ability to, um, re to request that data be expunged or changed, um, and we are collecting the absolute minimum needed to deliver your magazines. One misconception is that we have to write to all of you for permission to use the data that we've got. We don't. We've got a legitimate reason for doing it, which is to send you your magazines and to manage your subscription. So you will find some organisations writing to you. That's their decision. It's not, as, as far as we're concerned, necessary if there's a legitimate purpose for using the data. I've had to do it for my organisation. Uh, and I actually wrote, and I've got three guys coming back saying, I'm a data protection officer and you don't have to do that. Yeah, good. Uh, That's so nice to know. Well, what, one final thing. In the May issue of the magazine, you will all receive a standard letter that basically announces the policy, says where it is, um, summarises key points, and we're, we believe that that's sufficient.
Yeah. Well, I must admit I was coming from the G2PR regulations. Um, you're happy to give us, all new members, if you like, the names of, and addresses of the people who've just joined the organisation. Presumably that's covered in your uh, 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 application. That you're absolutely. Doing. So we've, we've had a positive process for confirming that you consent to your data being shared with other members on the membership list for some time. And we share with you every November on the back of the carry sheet used to deliver the November mailing, we share what data we hold and which bits of that data you consent to share with other people. And every year in the membership column in Bulletin in November, I point out that that's there. And I know from somebody who came and saw me a couple of hours ago that they never actually turned over to page two, even though it said turn over to page two. And so they were surprised that they weren't on the membership list. And that's, we told them in November, they just never noticed. So we've got an active process. We've had an active process for some years. We've got an active process in online recruitment. And we've had that for some time as well. So we believe that we're doing the right things in terms of confirming consent to publish. Two other things. We never publish the name of affiliate members. So those of us who've got family members associated with our association membership, we do not publish that data. We've no authority to do so, no need to do so. The second thing is we never publish the data of juniors. Any other questions? Then I think that we're done. So thanks very much, everybody. See you next year. I'm going to